Hello! And happy Halloween! <laughs> it took me a while to decide what I wanted to do for a Halloween video, but then I, it suddenly dawned on me, the perfect idea. Which was, of course, to buy myself one of these, so I could do a Sinisty and Poltergeist tea set. <laughs> Except, I actually bought two of them because I liked the teapot from this one and the cups from this one. So yeah. Anyway, let's just open them up and take a look what we're working with. Let's start with this one. I don't think I've ever done one of these before. I used to have a little tea set like this. Uh, I still have it somewhere, but it wasn't a paint your own one. I did use it a lot though, I actually did. I did hot chocolate in it like all the time. It does of course come with these paints, but I'm gonna guess these paints are super dry and just not that good in general. I considered making it more challenging by trying to use these paints, but most of the reviews said they were really dry, so I was just like, you know what, I'll, I'll just use my own paints. Here we go. So, the main thing we want from this set is the teacups. So this teapot, nothing particularly wrong with it, it's just kind of flat, they usually do this. I think it's just because, for one, it's easier for packaging, and it's also just probably easier for kids to paint. Also, the thing I wanted to do with the lid, um, I needed a bit more space on it, so I wanted to find maybe a bigger lid. I haven't 100% decided how I want to paint these, but I have a rough idea in my head of what I want to do. Anyway, let's open the other one. This one's in a big polystyrene block. There we go. Oh. oh, okay. So this is the one I wanted for the teapot, which it's just, it's a lot rounder. There's more space for me to work with on the lid and I just thought it was a better shape. It is kind of small <laughs> next to the teacups, but then it's kind of small next to its own teacups. So I guess they are just always small. Um, you can kind of see here why I wanted this other set, because this really doesn't scream sinister to me. It's a bit too, like, vase-shaped. Uh, but these are kind of an interesting shape, a bit bizarre, but I'm sure we'll have uh, fun probably painting that with my niece sometime. Don't know what we'll paint on those. Gary wants me to paint this to look like the part of greed. We'll see. <laughs> For now, I'm just going to be painting this teapot in these teacups. <laughs> I may have bought more than I needed with this, but hey, what are you gonna do? So first I got out all the paints I thought I might need, and I had my switch aside for a 3D model reference. Somehow I didn't get any paint on my switch through the entire process, <laughs> which uh, I'm not sure how I managed that, but good job, me, I guess. I used the packaging from one of the tea sets as a palette because for some reason I don't have a palette. I definitely used to have palettes, but it's been a while since I've got out the acrylics and I guess I threw them away, so <laughs> I had to improvise. I also mixed up a lot more paint than I actually needed because the last thing I want is to run out of a colour and have to remix and try and get the exact same shade. And I never really use my acrylics, so it's not a big deal if I run out. Also, for most of the colours, I added two extra things. One of them being a random paint I have that's just labelled as pearlescent in five different languages. <laughs> and the other thing being Liquitex Matte Medium. It's just something I happened to have from some other projects I was doing. <laughs> I was hoping the pearlescent paint would make them a little bit sparkly, and the matte medium would stop them from having that a nasty acrylic plasticky look because I wanted them to not be like that. <laughs> I don't know if those two things are sort of a contradiction, but whatever, I just threw them in and hoped for the best. It did take a few layers of paint to make each colour opaque, even though I didn't water any of them down, because the surface of the cups doesn't really take paint very well. Honestly, it was harder than I thought it would be to get the first layers down. <laughs> I'd be curious to see how well a child could actually paint one of these, considering this is a kit intended for children. Although maybe the paint that comes with the kits sticks better somehow, I don't really know. 
I guess I'll find out when I paint the rest of them with my nieces sometime. Anyway, I got started painting one of the cups and the teapot, uh, leaving about 30 minutes between coats to let them dry. Honestly, the actual painting process of this didn't take very long, but because I had to wait so long between layers, it ended up taking a really long time to finish this. It was sort of spread over several days that I'd slowly work on it. You may have noticed I only painted one cup blue, and that's because I decided from the start that I would make one of the Sinisties a shiny. Of course, because it's me. <laughs> I love shinies. I will put a shiny wherever I can put one. So while the teapot and the first cup were drying, I mixed up some pink paint with the pearlescent paint and the Liquitex. I used the pearlescent paint as the main method of lightening the pink, but unfortunately the pearlescent paint seems to be a bit thinner than my other paints, so it ended up really not sticking to the cup at all, so I wiped that off and used white gesso as a primer for the first few layers. Honestly, I could have primed everything beforehand, but I didn't actually want to paint over the white. Like, the parts of the cup were gonna be white, I just wanted to leave them unpainted because I thought that would give like a more like porcelain look and I didn't want to spoil that by putting primer paint over it. <laughs> the one part I did use white paint for was the little eyes and the mouths which I went ahead and added as soon as I was happy with how opaque everything was looking. For some reason I painted the eyes really far apart. I know that I did this on purpose because I remember making the conscious decision to paint them too far apart. Like, if I did them too far and it was an accident, I could have wiped them off and done it again. But for some reason I decided I wanted them to look like this. I mean, I do think Sinistee's eyes are a bit too close together on the official design, just personally. But I definitely put them a little too far apart on mine. <laughs> Overcorrected what I, what I didn't like, I suppose. I still think they look good, I just... Uh, I don't know why I did them that far apart. <laughs> and then I used the pink and blue paint that I'd already mixed to make small amounts of darker versions of those colours so I could add all the little swirly details and things. After making a start on some of the details, I realised that it would be a lot easier if I like penciled them in first, <laughs> so I started doing that. There's actually an official Poltergeist and Sinisty that you can buy. I think they're really expensive but they're supposed to be like, you know, a usable cup and pot. I had briefly considered buying them at one point, but to be honest, I actually think I like mine better. Not that the official ones aren't great, they're obviously a lot neater than mine, but they have a weird thing where it kind of cuts off at the handle because they're not printed right up to the edges. I don't know how to explain that. I'll put a picture on screen. <laughs> I wonder if they had merch in mind when they designed these Pokemon. After going over the details two or three times, I was happy with how they looked, and so I moved on to the gold parts. The gold parts definitely did not want to stick on the first layer, but I did get them to stick after a few layers. It's also very difficult to see while you're painting in gold. This applies to all the colours, but particularly the gold. It was kind of difficult to paint these because I was obviously recording it, so I needed to make sure that I was focusing on keeping it in a place that would be in shot, having the lights on and all that stuff. I don't think I did the best job of that because I'm not used to recording like 3D painted things, but hopefully I, I managed to get some good footage. <laughs> But particularly with the gold, having the lights on, it was like reflecting so bright that I couldn't really see what I was doing that well. And if I lean in too close to really focus on it, then my head would be in the camera. So I just had to try and go carefully and hope I got it in the right place. Once I was finally done with the gold, I went ahead and started adding all the purple parts. For Poltergeist, it's usually like sitting out of the pot a little bit and it's wearing the lid as a hat. But obviously since my lid was going to be just on the pot normally, I had to think of a different way to paint it. I decided that on the lid I would paint the place where there's supposed to be like a crack that, that has like a piece chipped off of it. 
and I would paint it in a way so it looked like the, the poltergeist was in the teapot, just peeking through the crack. And to complete that look, I painted little fingers on the rim of the teapot so we sort of perched a little bit. <laughs> As for the cups, I of course painted on the purple drip where there's supposed to be a, a little chip in the cup. I couldn't really do the little pinky out thing that Synesty does because I'm not adding any like extra 3D elements to the cups. So I just sort of painted fingers around the handle. <laughs> it's the best I could come up with. <laughs> One part I was kind of worried about from the start was doing the gradient effect on the pot, but I think it actually turned out alright after a few layers. And after painting the gradient, I went ahead and added the other brown details the little drips in the cups, and of course the poltergeist eyes. Also, even though you would never really see this, I did go ahead and add a purple circle on the bottom of each one, because if you look at the 3D models, the bottom of the cups and the pot are actually open. Uh, it's more obvious on poltergeist because it has legs that usually hang out, but Synesty is a bit less obvious, but they are there, it's just sort of the base of the cup is just open. <laughs> I could have also been cute and added a mark of authenticity on the bottom, but let's be real, these are definitely the phony forms. <laughs> Besides, I kind of like the idea that these are like Poltergeist and Sinistee that have possessed an actual children's tea set rather than a full-sized one, so they actually are this tiny. <laughs> and you know, I don't think there really are authentic forms of children's tea sets. that They're all kind of the same. <laughs> the final detail was to add some thin grey lines on the pot to show where all the cracks are supposed to be. I started very pale because I didn't want them to stand out too much, but it was a little bit too pale against the blue. But it was fine because I'd, I'd rather go for a pale layer first before uh, going really dark. I went over with a darker grey and I didn't really like it at first, but after it was all dried and I put everything together, I was actually quite pleased with how it all looked. They're not perfect, but I think they have a kind of cute homemade look to them. At least that's what I'll keep telling myself. <laughs> and with that final detail done, my Poltergeist Sinistee tea set is complete. Overall, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. It was a lot harder than I expected. <laughs> I do like to paint, but I don't paint that often, so I'm not the best at it. <laughs> also, it's just more difficult to paint on a surface that's rounded and also super small. I also did have to slightly adapt the pattern since the cups and the teapot I had weren't exactly the same shape as the official Pokemon. <laughs> One of the ways I adapted them was to not paint anything on the insides of the cups because I wanted them to be theoretically usable as cups. Not that I'll ever actually put anything in them. I just like the idea that technically they are usable. Anyway, that was my Halloween video. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> it's more on the cutesy side than the spooky side, but I mean, what else did you expect from my channel, really? Let me know in the comments what you thought of my tea set. <laughs> Maybe throw some ideas my way for some similar sorts of crafts I could do next Halloween. Thanks for watching. Consider liking and subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time.